Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to thepixelab.net. So after my last tutorial on camera tracking, I had a lot of questions about shadows. How to set it up so that shadows look like they were projecting onto the pool table, and then also how to bring those shadows into After Effects. So I'm going to try to answer some of those questions today. Um, this is going to be kind of just a really quick overview of how to deal with shadows in cinema, and then also in After Effects. So it'll be a two-part series. So first let me show you how to set up Cinema 40 so that we can get shadows in here properly. Alright, so the one thing when we're dealing with live action footage in Cinema is we need a way to have it referenced in the background. So we're going to do that with the background. So just drop in a background and then we'll go ahead and dump my texture onto the background. And if your texture isn't displaying correctly, make sure that the size of your image is the correct size of your uh, render settings. All right, so let's go ahead and put in a 3D dude and see what we can get going here. Let's go ahead and hit our drop it to floor and now he's on the ground plane, right? Let's rotate him a little bit. So now if we kind of navigate around here, you're gonna see that grid and what we're gonna wanna do is navigate in our viewport so the grid looks like it's perfectly matched up with the ground plane of this background image. So you can see that we're getting kind of close right about here. Looks like it is rotated a little bit, so here's a little uh, tip for you. If you hold down three, and the number three, and then right click on your mouse and click and drag, you'll see that it changes the camera banking, which is a really, really cool shortcut. All right, so something like that looks pretty good, right? Somewhere right in there. All right, let's go ahead and make our do a little bit bigger, actually. Drop into the floor again. All right. So we got everything set up. Now we need a light. Drop a light in here and we'll move it up and over a little bit, maybe to the front. And we're going to go to our light and make sure that we have uh, shadows checked on and soft. Let's go ahead and hit render. So we have everything set up, but we have no shadow. And that's because Cinema 40 has no reference for where the shadow needs to be kind of cast onto. There needs to be a plane to catch the shadow. So that's what we're going to do next. Let's go ahead and make a plane and we'll scale this guy up. And this will be our shadow catching plane, right? Let's go ahead and hit render again. Now you can see that we're getting somewhere. Let's go ahead and take our light and move it up a little bit so the shadow isn't quite as long. All right, so now we have our shadow catching plane. So if we wanna render all this stuff out of cinema, what we're gonna have to do is have this background image kind of projected through this plane, right? So what we're gonna do is take this texture and put it on the plane as well. And it's going to come in wrong, obviously, but this is a super easy fix. All you have to do is change your plane to frontal projection. And then based on how we set up our camera so it's the right angle, everything's kind of lined up, it's going to look like the plane is perfectly matched up with the background. Um, you can see the seam here, and to fix that, all we have to do is right-click on our plane, go to Cinema 40 Tags Compositing, and then check on Compositing Background, and then it'll blend that plane into the background. And there you go. That is all you have to do if you want to render your image out of Cinema 40 with the 3D objects and the shadows. It's all set up, you're ready to go and it's perfectly integrated into here. If you want to change your shadows, you can go into your light and go into shadows and change the density of it, and then it won't be quite as harsh. So you can definitely play around with it in here. This is definitely one way that you could do it, and you might be done with your project right now and hit render and be done. Um, but a lot of the times you're gonna to wanna to set it up so that you can bring your shadow and your object separately into After Effects so you can composite everything and do uh, have more control over color correction. So that is the quick overview of how you set everything up in Cinema 4D. I hope that you learned something and uh, I think next time is gonna be even better because bringing it into After Effects is pretty awesome. So we'll talk to you again soon. Bye everybody.